Hey everyone, this is Stephen Strawn at Cast Iron Cookware, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. Today I'm going to go through the steps on how to set up an electrolysis tank, and we're going to be doing that coming right up. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone that has purchased my product, Easy Beasy Cast Iron Seasoning. The purchase of this product helps keep this channel going, and I just want to say thank you so very much. So let's get on into the video. I've had many people ask me, how do you set up an electrolysis tank? And there's so many different ways to go about that. There's so many different variations. I personally have a stainless steel tank, and it's really been handy for me but not everybody can find a stainless steel tank. And you may have to use stainless steel anodes or maybe even iron anodes. And we're gonna kind of discuss that as we go. There's several components when it comes to an electrolysis tank. Number one, you have the tank itself. It could be made out of stainless steel or it can be made out of just a type of plastic. Or you can even use a plastic foot tub. Number two is the solution. I use Super washing soda for my electrolyte. I will leave a link in the video description of how you can find that. It'll be an Amazon link, so check that out if you're looking for the particular electrolyte that I use. You also will need sacrificial anodes. Now me personally, because I have a stainless steel tank, my tank itself is the sacrificial anode. But you can use stainless steel plates or you can use iron or something like that just hanging inside the tank. Number four is a power source. You can use a manual battery charger or you can use a DC power supply. Either one works fine. Now an automatic battery charger will not work because it will detect a fault and just shut down. And the last thing is the suspension system. So we're gonna talk about all of these individually. Number one, the electrolysis tank. A lot of people use a 55 gallon drum. Here's a picture of a 55 gallon drum tank right here. Those work great, or you can use a foot tub. Here's a picture of a foot tub system right here. Now me personally, I have a stainless steel tank, and here's a picture of my tank right here. All of these will work fine. The main thing is you need one that will not leak. Eventually, if my stainless steel tank wears thin enough where it leaks, I will probably just cut the bottom out of it and just set the entire tank down inside a plastic tank and use the sides for a sacrificial anode. Number two, the second thing you're gonna need is electrolysis solution. I personally use the Super Washing Soda. It's the Arm & Hammer brand, it works great. Pretty much what everybody that uses electrolysis uses is the Super Washing Soda by Arm & Hammer. There might be some variations, and if you use something other than Arm & Hammer Super Washing Soda. Go ahead and leave that in the comments. I like to see exactly what you're using. The solution that I use with the uh, Super Washing Soda, I use one half cup per every five gallons. I will say this, as your solution evaporates, your electrolyte solution does not evaporate. Originally, whenever mine evaporated, I would add more water and more electrolyte. And what happened is I got a really strong solution which lowered my resistance to the point where my battery charger was working hard and it eventually burned it out. You may burn out a fuse, you may burn some wires in two, but you don't want a heavy solution of electrolyte because your resistance will be so low that your power supply will eventually not be able to keep up. So I would suggest if you have evaporation, just add back water because electrolyte does not evaporate. But just as a caution, your battery charger won't hold up if you keep adding solution. I've heard people say, well, I went ahead and made mine a little thicker just so it'll work better. Uh, I can tell you, it'll work better for a little bit, but your battery charger will die. Here is a picture of the super washing soda that I used. Okay, number three, you're gonna need sacrificial anodes. A lot of people will use rebar. They'll use uh, lawnmower blades. Now you will have to Polish them down every now and then just because they will gunk up. It will get to the point where it will not work. So you have to clean them pretty regular. I almost never clean my stainless steel tank. 
Now there's a lot of gunk in the bottom and that will just build up over time. But you can use rebar, you can use just about any kind of metal as long as it is not galvanized. Now you stay away from galvanized because you will have problems with that. Uh, a thicker material usually does better. I think rebar does pretty good. Rebar can usually be lined all around the tank. Here's a picture of a tank with rebar lined all around the inside and connected together. Now, if you notice, your sacrificial anodes all need to be connected together. They need to be linked either by some kind of cable or some kind of wire. And you need one that's solid enough to handle the electric charge going through it without burning in two. A lot of people will just use a continuous stainless steel sheet. You can wrap the sheet all the way around, have it bent where it will go all the way around your tank or you can use two pieces. Here's a couple of pieces of stainless steel sheets used as sacrificial anodes. Now the power source. That is one thing that has been really tough. So when it comes to an electrolysis tank, if you connect a automatic battery charger, it's gonna say there's something wrong and it's gonna shut down. So it's gonna be no good whatsoever when it comes to an electrolysis tank. If you can find a manual battery charger in a yard sale or a flea market or something like that, that's gonna work great. But there are alternatives and that is a DC power supply. That's what I currently am using. Here's a picture of the DC power supply that I'm using. And actually, you can check out the video where I hooked two of the DC power supplies to a single piece of cast iron, and it works twice as good or almost twice as good. Now, let's talk about the suspension system. You can just hang it with a wire or even something that does not conduct electricity and just go ahead and connect your lead from your power supply onto your cast iron. That's the way I like to do it. I used to connect on to a piece of rebar or maybe a piece of all thread that held my cast iron, but I found out I get much better success if I connect it straight to the cast iron itself. Now, if you connect to a piece of all thread, and then that piece of all thread is connected to your cast iron, if it's suspended into your uh, electrolyte solution, you're gonna have a charge coming from every piece of that bar, not just your cast iron. So you're losing some of your energy output by doing that. You need your cast iron completely submerged in the water and you're going to be good as long as it is not touching any of your sacrificial anodes. Now the way you connect, you'll use your black lead, which is your negative. So negative to the iron, positive to your sacrificial anodes. Don't get them switched around or it won't work. Here is a diagram of the way you should connect your cast iron. Okay, now that we have everything connected, everything running good, there are a few things that you need to know. One is, if you ever have a piece that has tested positive for lead, and you use your electrolysis tank to strip that pan, so you need to get rid of that solution and clean your tank and start over, because you don't want to be contaminating any of the pieces. I suggest to test for lead before you ever put a piece in the electrolyte solution. I've got these little lead test swabs and I've done a video on how to test for lead. Check that out on the video card. I'll leave it right here. Now, talking about stainless steel, there's a lot of people who says, do not ever use stainless steel for your electrolysis tank, whether it's part of your hanging system or if it's part of your sacrificial anodes. Now, I understand that hexavalent chromium is a gas that is produced in electrolysis when you have stainless steel. But I have learned it takes a lot more energy than what you're going to be doing on a small home electrolysis tank to produce those kinds of gases. But if you are concerned about using stainless steel, just don't use it. Use something else. Me personally, I prefer stainless steel as a sacrificial anode. It cleans up really well. But I also have been testing periodically for hexavalent chromium in my electrolysis tank. Even on the lowest spectrum, I don't even have a slightest coloration 
of hexavalent chromium in my electrolysis tank. So I have been good and not had any problems whatsoever. A lot of people say, what do you do to dispose of your electrolysis water when you're done with it? Well, actually, I never get done with it. A lot of people use the same solution over and over and over. And then when they have evaporation, they just add water. Now your electrolyte is still there, so don't add electrolyte. Now, if you had an electroplating company that was dealing with thousands of gallons of water a year, then you may have a problem. But dealing with, you know, 10 or 15 or 20 gallons over your lifetime, it's not going to be an issue whatsoever. I would say this, you also want to make sure that you have a ventilated area because the electrolysis tank will produce a hydrogen gas and it's a hydrogen oxygen gas so it is very flammable. Now it dissipates very very quickly but a time or two I've had lots of bubbles pile up on my tank and just out of fun I have lit them and they will explode. Now the, sometimes they will explode very loudly. You can check out my video on will my electrolysis tank explode. It's, it's kind of funny that it can explode, not your entire tank, but the bubbles. Uh, what happens there is you wind up having soap bubbles splattered all over your shop, maybe even all over you. I found that out by accident. I was using a chain as my suspension system, and I was going to adjust a little bit, and I broke the connection and got a spark. And that spark ignited my bubbles, and what a surprise. So there are so many methods on putting together an electrolysis tank. I would suggest that if you are on Facebook, look up the Facebook group called Electrolysis Tank Builders. It is a great group with a lot of information. There's a lot of good reading there. So check out the Electrolysis Tank Builders group. It is a great group. Now the electrolysis will remove rust and old seasoning. And there was a time where I had a pot that had splatter of concrete. I tried using lye, I tried just scrubbing it, and I couldn't get it off for anything. I put it in the electrolysis tank, and it just fell away. It just took a little bit of time, but little by little, it broke loose and just fell away. So it is a safe method. You say, why would I use electrolysis over a lye tank? Well, a lye tank works good, but it will not get rid of rust, and it will not get rid of concrete. <laughs> and it will only get rid of organics. Electrolysis will get rid of organics and debris and things like that on the cast iron as well. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you found some information that will help you setting up your electrolysis tank. And if you have, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I promise I'll keep more videos coming. And I just want to say thank you again for watching Cast Iron Cookware. Before you go, I just want to share something with you really quickly. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I just want to say, share the word and be a blessing.